Hello and welcome to this video from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. I'm Chris with the K. This video is part of a series. We've been working on this basic little game here. Today's video is going to get a little more advanced. We're going to be a lot, doing a lot of coding and I hope that I can explain things simply. But I think it'd be really great if we add multiplayer functionality to our game now before we get too far into the game. And we want to do that, not network, but local. Uh, we are going to have it so you can plug in multiple controllers and have multiple players. And there's different ways to do this. And the way I'm going to show you is a little more complex than the coding, but will save you headaches down the line, I promise. So real quick, since we're going to be having multiple players, we don't want the camera following one player anymore. Well, you could do split screen. I've done that before in Godot. We're not doing that this today. We're just going to grab this camera, which is currently a child. You can see it's connected to the player. We're going to grab that and put that back up on our map here. If I hit F5 now, you can see that the camera is here and I can move this player around. Now, if I hit escape, I can take this player or grab him from over here so I can just drag in another player. If I hit F5 now to start our game, I can use my keyboard and mouse to control the uh, player. One looks like he's moving faster than the other and I'll tell you exactly why I made a mistake. I drug him onto the player so he's the child of the player. So he's moving with the player so the player's moving and he's playing. We don't want that. We want him on the map here, or actually on the tile layer would probably be better. Now let's try it again. So I'm using my mouse keys or my game pad to control the second player, or both players. Doesn't matter which game controller I use. Now the way most people will tell you to make multi-controller games in Godot uh, is to go to projects and you can see if we go to map input you can see the controls we made. And you can see right now I have it set so that Joy uh, button 13, which is D-pad left, is set to all devices. So it's looking at all devices. Now you can set it to look at the, the first device, the second device, which the first device is zero. So zero or one or two. And what you would do is come in here and instead of just having left, you'd have player one left, player one right, player one jump. And then you'd have more for player two left, player two right, player two jump. If you want a third player, you come in here and add more. So every player extra that you want, you have to come in here and add more controls we're not going to do that. What we're going to do right now is just disable our joypad. And again, there's different ways to do this, but this is how I'm going to do it in this controller. Now, if I hit F5 now, we can see the keyboard still works, but if I touch the buttons on any of my game controllers, nothing's working because we've disabled that. We're going to now also clean up our player code. So click on our player here, go to the script. Right now, so far, we've done everything in the physics process which is fine for a small game, but you really want to break things up into separate functions. A function is a group of commands that you can call at any point. And different people have different views on this, but in general, you don't want them to get too long. I heard a general rule once that a rule of thumb is maybe 20 lines at max. If it's more than 20 lines, you might want to break it up into smaller uh, functions. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to come, I'm going to grab all this. I'm going to hit uh, Control X and to cut that. And then down here, I'm going to paste it back in. Then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to type in funk and I'm going to say keyboard inputs and I spelled funk wrong, funk. <laughs> and then I'm also going to put my animations right here into another function funk and I'm going to say play animations. Oops. Now for these functions to run, I have to put them, I have to call them up here. I'm going to say keyboard inputs and play animations. Now I'm going to put the keyboard inputs and the controller inputs into different functions for the tutorial. Technically you could combine them with if then statements within the functions, but let's go ahead and separate them out. So for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my keyboard inputs and I'm going to rename this gamepad inputs. And again, I will put that to make sure it runs through our loops right here. Now, what we want to do is change this. Instead of saying input action just press, which is looking for the actions we set in the project there, we're going to say is joy button pressed. It's asking for a device number. I'm going to say zero comma, and then we'll give us a list of buttons. I'm going to choose joy button B. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing right down here. Now, before we had our game controllers, each controlled 
uh, both players. But now, if I run this and I press the jump button on this controller, you can see it's controlling both our players still. We need to give each player its own ID. But so far, right now, it's only being controlled by one controller, not two. So let's come up here. Let's create a variable. We're going to say at symbol export var player underscore ID equals zero. Okay, remember the first controller is zero. So every time you plug in a game controller into your computer, the first one's gonna be zero. When you plug in a second one, it's gonna be one. If you plug in the next one, it's gonna be two, and then three, then four. Well, saying export here allows, when I go to the map here and I choose one of these, you can see over here, it has that variable player ID. I can set this guy to have an ID of two. Now when I, or one, which makes him second player. Now when I hit uh, a button on one of the controllers, it still controls both of them because I have to continue with our script. We're down here, we have it hard coded to zero. We're gonna set that to the variable of player ID. Now, if I hit jump on one controller, it controls one. And if I hit jump on the other controller, it controls two. Now we still haven't set up the left and right buttons. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're actually gonna change the way this works. Again, I told you in one of the first tutorials how we were using a template for uh, character animations and how we were gonna replace all of that eventually. That's what we're doing right now. So let me go ahead and I'm just gonna copy and paste some things here. So, yes, that's, that's what I want. Actually, instead of copy and pasting, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a variable up here called direction, and I'm gonna set it to zero. Down here, we're saying direction to left and right axes. We're not gonna do that anymore. We are going to get rid of this, and we are going to get rid of this, and then we're gonna say if input dot is action just pressed, no, sorry, pressed, we want left, we're gonna say direction equals negative one. That will make the character go to the right, or left, I <laughs> mean, And then we're gonna say else, and we can just copy this, and then change this to say right direction equals one. And then this can go here. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Expected. Sorry, this should not say else. This should say else if. There we go. So now it's looping through and it's checking the keyboard press. If you press left, direction is going to be negative one. If it's right, then it's going to be one. And then we're going to do our speed check here. But we actually don't want that here because we want to calculate both joystick and our joypad and, and keyboard. So we're gonna move this up here. I told you this was gonna get a little complicated. I hope this is not too much for beginners, uh, which is what this series is aimed towards. Now let's look at our joypad here. We have the jump. Our double jump actually doesn't work properly. Uh, so we're gonna to have to modify that. But what we're gonna do is we can now copy this and down here, replace this, but again, we're going to do is joy button pressed for both of these. And in here, we're going to say, again, player ID, and we're gonna say joy, and we're gonna do D-pad left. And then down here, we're gonna say player ID joy, and we're gonna look for D-pad right. Okay. Now, up here we said, is the button pressed? Not just pressed, because it's constantly looping and seeing if you're still pressing it. And that's exactly what these are doing down here. Let me get rid of these comments. The issue comes in with our double jump here. So if I was to hit F5 now, we should be able to take, pick up one controller and move the player left and right and jump. Although he is still moving when I let go of the button. And that's because we have to, before we run either of those, reset direction to zero. 
So every time it loops, it resets to zero, then checks your controller again. So now I can pick up one controller, move him left, move him right, make him jump. I can grab the other controller, move him left, move him right, and make him jump. So we have multiplayer, but our double jump is broken, okay? The reason being is that it's looping here. So here we're saying, okay, check. Is button B pressed? And he's on the floor. Yes, set double jump to true. Do this, do this. And then it immediately loops again and thinks that you have just double jumped, like, instantaneously. So it took me a minute to think through this. And this is what I came up with. Instead of having double jump be true or false up here, where we have double jump, we're going to set it to zero. Then down here, what we're going to do, keyboard, joystick, we're going to say double jump, and we're going to add one to it. So, but first we're going to set it to zero. So you're on the floor and you jump, we're going to set it back to zero. Down here, we're going to say, instead of double jump true, we're going to say double jump equals one. And then here, we're going to say double jump plus equals one. And then we need to check to see if the player has let go of the button. So now, a separate if statement, we're going to say if, and we're going to say joy button pressed, and double jump equals zero. But we're not going to just stop there. We're going to come over here and say exclamation mark. That means not true. So we're saying basically if they release the button, then what are we going to do? We're going to set double jump plus equals one. Now if I hit F5, I should be able to double jump. Perfect. And same with the other player, double jump. But we have to fix the keyboard section now as well. So let's go ahead and exit out of our game. Because up here we're still looking to see if it's true. So we want to rewrite this as well to similar. That's why we could put all this in one function and check different controls. But I think for clarity, I'm going to do this. Set this to zero. What was it telling me here? Oh, I got to put this here now. And then, then I have to say if input jump, we have action just pressed, we're going to say is action just released jump. And double jump equals zero, sorry, check it's zero. Then we're going to say double jump plus equals one. I'm going to try to explain all this again in a moment. Let's go ahead and press F5 to start our game. Again, game controller works. Can we double jump? We can. And keyboard still controls all the players. But if you're playing single player, you still want to be able to control it. Everything seems to be functioning properly. So we have multiplayer. Okay, I know this was a lot, especially for beginners. And of course, you can always check my code online. I share everything. Check out the links in the description of this video for this code. Um, but let's review what we've done. We have set a player ID. We've exported so we can change it in the map editor. By default, it's zero. But if we go to our map here, and let's say we wanted a third player, I can press Control D to clone this guy and move him over here. And then I can give him a next number. And if I plugged in a third controller, it would control that. But the keyboard will control everybody. So coming in here, again, looking at this code. So each player has its own ID. We also set direction as a global variable to zero. Remember, negative one will make them go left. Regular one will make them go right. Zero will stop them from moving. In our loop, we're going to reset direction to zero every time it loops. This is going to be like 60 times a second on a decent computer. Then we're going to run our keyboard and, input and gamepad input functions, which are almost identical. But here we're just checking, is jump pressed and they're on the floor? If so, set double jump to zero, play a sound, move them up. And then here we're going to say, okay, 
double jump, then add one. If when we release, we're going to do set this to zero. I actually don't think I need to do that, do I? Ah, it's, it's best if I do. <laughs> and um, down here, we're doing if input is joystick pressed. And we're checking the ID. You can see each time it's checking the ID. And that's why we can have as many players as we want. We're going to go joy button, joy button B, joy button B. These two are checking, is it pressed? And is he on the floor? Or can he double jump? If so, then jump again. If that button is not pressed and double jump is zero, well, then we're going to set double jump. We're going to add one to it. Really, we just probably set it to one. Um, so that's basically looking at when you release the button while you're jumping. OK, then here we're going to check if a button is pressed, if it's button left, set the direction to left. If the button is right, set the button to right, but only for the controller with the matching ID. And then we have our animation stuff that we worked on in another video. Oh, I hope, I hope that wasn't too much. But making this game multiplayer, I think, is going to be more exciting than just playing a game by yourself. And it's something that a lot of people don't get into early on in, in their game design. And I think that they should because it's fun. So in the next video, what we might do is since right now we have two players or as many players as we want, they both look identical, right? And I'm not going to create graphics for each player, but I want to give them each their own unique color. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. I hope that you have a great day.